Well, I've finally got my hands on it, lads. The top reward for the ongoing Operation Winter event. For many players, this Soviet jet will be their first taste of top-tier jet combat. Being a battery in 10.0, however, this thing is going to be facing the most advanced jets in the game. And due to this vehicle's rather lacklustre weapons in my opinion, I don't think new players are going to do well in it. Alright lads, today I'm going to be talking about the weapons and performance of the MiG-21 PFM. Starting as always with the basics, this jet is a Rank 6 battery-rating 10.0 jet fighter located in the Soviet tech tree. Being a Rank 6 event vehicle, it will come stock and have to be fully upgraded to unlock its full potential. It will also only be effective at researching vehicles between the ranks of 5 and 6, and for the Soviet tech tree, this ranges from the first generation jet fighters right up to the modern MiG-21s. To unlock the PFM, you will have to grind out 10 pilot stars from the ongoing Operation Winter event. Alternatively, if you're watching this video in the future, the jet can also be purchased on the Gaijin Marketplace. However, at the time of recording, I have no idea about the price, but I'm going to guess around 60 to 70 Gaijin coins. You can then additionally purchase the Expert and Ace qualifications for the vehicle, costing 1,020,000 silver lions and 2,400 golden eagles respectively. You also have a fairly high repair cost of 10,254 silver lions. You just know Gaijin doesn't want its players to have fun. Going on to the rewards, and the vehicle has a base RP modifier of 2.32, which gives you an RP modifier of 232% with a free-to-play account and 464% with a premium account. Your base silver line modifier of 1.9 is actually pretty bad for this battle rating, with all of the other MiG-21 variants exceeding a 2.2% modifier. You can expect a 190% silver line modifier with a free-to-play account and 285% with a premium account. While the MiG-21 PFM had great performance in real life, it was very limited in its range. However, in War Thunder, I think this jet will be limited in its weaponry. As we'll see later on in this video, the PFM is unable to carry the legendary R-60 missiles. So with the jet's low modifiers, as well as its underwhelming weaponry, will this plane be suitable for new players? Alright lads, just letting you know, I now have a Twitter account, I'm using the handle Sarko Sniper, the same name as my channel. I mainly will be posting behind the scenes, shit posts, as well as general updates about the channel. I also have a Discord server, it's kind of small at the minute, but we already have a decent community going, and I'd love for you lads to be a part of it. There'll be links down in the description below, and now back to the video. Starting with the engine and flight characteristics, and the MiG-21 PFM is powered by the Tomansky R11 afterburning engine. It has an afterburning power output of 5,300 kilograms of thrust. This engine is essentially a slight upgrade over the engine powering the MiG-21 F-13. Compared to the engines in the SMT and the MiG-21 base, this engine is lacking some 2,000 kilograms of thrust. Because of this significant lack of power in comparison, this MiG variant doesn't feel as eye-wateringly fast as the other MiGs, especially on takeoff, as you do not feel that raw power and blistering acceleration. Nevertheless, this decent engine gives you a respectable 145 meters per second climb rate with clean wings, and when carrying two anti-aircraft missiles, you still have a respectable climb rate of 131 meters per second. This is fairly good, and you will outclimb pretty much everything in a down tier, but due to you being a battery rating 10.0 aircraft, you will see 10.7 games pretty much constantly, where your 145 meters per second climb rate is dwarfed by the top American and Soviet fighters. The MiG also has a very high top speed at higher altitudes, being able to reach over 2,200 km per hour at an altitude of 30 kilometers. However, at near sea level, the plane will actually only be able to achieve a top speed of Mach 1.06, before ripping its wings at Mach 1.13. As I've mentioned, this MiG variant has rather average acceleration. This makes it pretty unforgiving in terms of energy management. If you make a stupid decision or poor maneuver, you no longer have the ability to rapidly accelerate and regain your lost energy. This is one of the major issues of the earlier MiG-21 variants. If you get slow, it takes you a while to get back up to maneuvering speed. So the MiG can kind of climb and kind of go fast, but can it turn? Well, not really. As I've mentioned, the MiG-21 has so-called maneuvering speed. This is mainly because the plane uses a delta wing design. This means instead of truly turning, the plane abuses the angle of attack in order to maneuver. However, when delta wing aircraft changes their angle of attack, the large surface area of their wings start to act as a huge air brake. As I said, the MiG-21 is a mixed bag. When travelling at high speeds, you can pull a high angle of attack. However, the more you turn, the more energy you bleed. This means if you try and engage in an extended dogfight, eventually the MiG-21 will get so slow you can no longer manoeuvre effectively. Being a delta wing design, it is a little tricky to fly at low speeds, such as taking off and landing, but not too difficult in my opinion. The MiG will rip its gear off at around 500km per hour and landing is made easier due to the tail parachute, which will deploy upon landing. This allows you to land quickly and get back in the battle much faster. Moving on to the weapons, and to start, this MiG-21 has both radar as well as a ballistic computer. This CCIP or constantly calculated impact point 
will give you an icon showing where your rockets will hit. Unlike the F4 Phantom, the MiG-21 does not get a ballistic computer for its bombs or guns, somewhat diminishing your effect in a closer support role. The MiG-21 PFM stock weapon is a GSH-23L. This weapon system is essentially two 23mm cannons with a high cyclic fire rate. These guns are essentially copies of the guns found on most of the Soviet Mi-24 gunships. The PFM variant moved away from the internally mounted 30mm cannon as found on the earlier F-13 model of MiG-21. Instead, the GSH is mounted on a centerline gun pod. This gun pod cannot be removed, and as I said, it is the aircraft's only weapon when stock. These cannons are located on the belly of the plane, which makes aiming them more difficult compared to conventional nose-mounted guns. The aiming issue is made much worse by the fact that these guns have a very low muzzle velocity, meaning you will have to lead targets unusually more than most other jets in the game. The GSH 23L is a total of 200 rounds of ammunition split across the guns, which means you will have to be really disciplined with your shots especially considering these guns have a high fire rate of 3,400 rounds per minute. This MiG-21, like all other early variants, only has two hard points, one on either wing, which rather limits your payload compared to later models. Your first payload choice is the good old S5K rockets. You can carry these in two configurations, the first with 32 rockets and the second with 64 rockets. The S5Ks themselves have a high explosive warhead capable of penetrating 150mm of armour. This is pretty terrible, and the warhead's payload of a measly 344 grams of TNT is also terrible. The rockets do have a pretty good travel speed of 610 meters per second, making them comparable to the French SNEBs. However, unlike the SNEBs, the S5K seem to be rather inaccurate and hard to aim. The second rockets available to carry are the S24s. You can only carry two of them, compared to the 64 S5K rockets. But they lack in quantity, they make up for in quality. While the S24s are slower, only having a maximum speed of 410 meters per second, they have a huge 25.5 kilograms of TNT in their warheads, giving them 80 millimeters of penetration at all angles. You will still need a direct hit to take out main battle tanks, but a close miss will still kill a lightly ammo vehicle or SPAA. You can then also carry two types of bombs: 250 kilogram bombs with an explosive radius of 6 meters, and 500 kilogram bombs with an explosive radius of 11 meters. You can either carry two 250s or two 500s. Remember, the PFM does not get a busted computer for its bombs, making accurately dropping them on small moving targets rather tricky. This MiG also gets access to the KH-66 anti-ship missiles. These are essentially the Soviet version of the Nordor bullpup Urta ground missiles. While they were designed to attack shipping, these missiles are still incredibly potent against ground targets, due to their insane explosive warhead of 65kg of TNT. These missiles are aimed by pointing the nose of the aircraft at the target, essentially giving you a mouse-aimed guided air to ground missile. They aren't perfect, but they get the job done. And finally, and disappointingly, the only missiles this jets get access to are the awful R3Ss. These are Soviet copies of the American AM9Bs, so naturally, they are pretty awful, especially at a battle rating of 10.0. They are of course infrared homing, meaning they will follow the heat signature of enemy jets. They have a maximum overload of 10 Gs and have an awful tracking system, meaning enemies just need to do a sharp turn and a simple roll to defeat these missiles. You can only carry two of them, and they are basically useless against an opponent paying attention. Due to being a battle rating 10.0 jet, all the vehicles you will be facing are supersonic. As the R3Ss only have a 2 second burn time in their rocket motors, most supersonic jets can literally just fly straight and outrun these missiles. The PFM also does not get access to any type of flares, so you are literally just going to get clubbed by AM9Js. Overall, the weapons of the PFM are awful in early realistic battles. Your gun is terrible in high speed engagements, and your AM9B clones are essentially just dead weight. While you may get a high win rate in this jet, it will mainly be because the MiG-21 bisses are carrying you. You will not be getting montage clips in this piece of shit. To conclude, the MiG-21 PFM will be the first taste of top tier many players experience, and what an awful experience they will have. Have fun grinding for 3 weeks to get this awful jet, with nothing going for it, apart from it being free to grind. It has poor guns, poor missiles, and with no flares, it's literally just free RP and silver lines for an F4E Phantom. I wouldn't even bother playing top tier Soviets for the next coming months, as teams for these jets are just going to get clubbed. You could make an argument that this jet can do well in ground realistic battles, fulfilling a ground attack role, but no one is playing battle rating 10.0 Soviet tanks. Most people are either playing 9.7 or 10.7, in which case, the SU-7 is better for 9.7, and if you're playing 10.7, then the MiG-21 SMT or BIS is just better in every way. So why even play this vehicle? I genuinely don't have an answer for you lads.
If they down tiered this jet to 9.7, then maybe it would be useful, but it would completely destroy the 8.7 meta. So literally, this jet is useless in game at the minute. I'm sorry to tell you lads, but it's true. As always, this is just my opinion. What do you guys think of this Soviet crock of shit? If you have any questions, criticism, positive or negative, or would even like to request a review, then please feel free to leave a comment below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, if I did my job correctly, hopefully you should have learned something new about this vehicle. If you do enjoy these sorts of videos, please do consider leaving a like and subscribing, but more importantly lads, I hope you have a great day, and thank you very much for watching.